I just took a picture, I think. <laughs> I can do patty lips. Oh no, it's recording. There you go, duck face. Okay, so let's talk about the liver, gallbladder, and pancreatic pet disorders. Uh, hepatitis, the pathophysiology, uh, local inflammation causes the liver to swell. Causes compression of the bile channel, channels and the fluid, fluid flowing through it will become blocked. This results in uh, elevated <coughs> bilirubin, which usually causes jaundice in the skin. And we can usually tell that by the yellow discoloration of both the sclera, the eyes, the skin, the mucous membranes. We're, we're looking for that. Um, a lot of times I can go to work and I can just walk in and see the patients kind of got that yellow hue, kind of like the walls in here. Um, <laughs> serious, you know, and we, we know that they you know, have a higher... Uh, uh, jaundice, uh, or a uh, level of jaundice, but we also know that there's liver in involvement here. If liver uh, blood flow is impaired, causing portal hypertension, what is the result? What happens? Portal hypertension. Pressure backs up. Well, we get ascites, okay? So that's a lot of uh, times uh, those, those uh, people who are EQH for a long period of time abuse alcohol, they develop cirrhosis liver, increases the portal hypertension, and they get ascites, uh, a, a forcing of fluid in the abdominal cavity. Uh, systemic effects uh, related to altered metabolic functions. Some of the signs and symptoms are rashes in the skin because we have more uh, uh, chemicals in the skin deteriorating in skin cells, angioedema in the face, arthritis, fever, and general, not feeling well, general malaise. Complications are related to liver, uh, uh, risk for liver cancer, cirrhosis, and death of liver tissue. All right, so as far as, oops, related, uh, risk factor of liver cancer, cirrhosis, death of liver tissue. Sorry, did you guys get that? There was a secret, like, fly in there. Okay, ready? All right. So when we talk about hepatitis, uh, hepatitis, uh, there's different types. Uh, easy way to remember is the bowels always come from the bowels. So your hepatitis A and E are the uh, fecal oral route. Uh, your B, uh, C, and D are transferred either blood, needles, sexual contact. Okay. So that's just an easy way of de determining, you know, you get uh, diagnosed with hepatitis B. It was from some uh, contact with blood, uh, contaminated needles, or sexual contact. All right, three phases. Uh, signs and symptoms. Your uh, pre eteric phase, you're going to have general malaise. You're going to have headaches, nausea, vomiting. You might have right upper quadrant pain and tenderness. You're going to have arthralgia, uh, joint pain, rash, uticaria. So you, all these, these is not being filtered out uh, through your blood, and it's going to be irritating your skin. You're going to have an enteric phase. Uh, this is when you have high levels of jaundice, uh, high levels of bilirubin, light or clay-colored stools. Your urine will be dark. And you're going to have heavy pruritus. You're going to be itchy. Usually this uh, happens or lasts for about two to four weeks, somewhere around there. <laughs> and then you're going to have your post uh, esoteric phase. Uh, fatigue, malaise, and liver enlargement. So anytime you think liver enlargement, this is you want to advise your patients to prevent any abdominal uh, trauma or pressure injury because then you have uh, increased uh, problems with uh, integrity of the structure. All right, uh, medical diagnosis. We're going to look at antibodies in the blood. Uh, they're going to have probably an elevation of AST and ALT and GGT. 
They're going to have elevation serum bilirubin. And we can further diagnose by taking a uh, liver biopsy, uh, a needle aspiration of the liver. So medical treatment, usually no cure. Uh, they can treat and manage symptoms. We're going to use antipyretics. We're going to use cortical steroids, uh, pyretics to prevent uh, fevers. We're going to cortical steroids to prevent or reduce inflammation. Nausea and vomiting, we're going to use antiemetics. Maybe commercial are lying to us, but there's been multiple drugs that have come out recently that claim that we're gonna we're gonna get to that because we don't actually cure it. Well, you reduce the viral. Well, we reduce the viral to a point to where the body can then take care of its it, itself. That's what the the medications are used for. But surprisingly, we, it, during times uh, of severe immunocompromise, it can come back. So it's not. It's not a saying it's cured is not the true verbiage. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it just reduces, but we're going to talk about it in just a little bit. So uh, medical treatment, there's no cure. Uh, we're going to treat and manage sense, symptoms. Diet, high calorie, high carbohydrate because we need more energy. Uh, and moderate to high protein. So high protein, anytime you have liver problems, uh, protein is a, a disastrous for that. So we're going to use moderate, or no, excuse me, moderate to low proteins. Anything with liver, correct? It says moderate to high. On yeah, I know it says moderate to high, but I'm thinking in my head, what I've read, it's been the opposite, or moderate to low uh, with any type of liver involvement. Let me double check that because I want to make sure that this is correct, okay? I do not have this highlighted as far as a possible test question but I still want to be correct for you guys. Okay, so I'll get back to you on that, okay? Uh, low fat with supplementary, supplementary vitamins. Okay, prevention, vaccines, immunoglobins, hepatitis B immune globin, HBIG. Uh, we're gonna do a focused assessment, uh, general hate, a state of health. We're gonna inquire them about their drug use and their alcohol use. Uh, chemical exposure, dietary habits, blood trans history of blood transfusions, because you can still get hepatitis from a blood transfusion. Uh, recent travel, uh, usually travel out of uh, the continental borders of the United States. Changes in skin, urine, and stools. Uh, vital signs, weight changes, and mental status changes. So the book says... Um the protein requirements are the same or slightly higher. They're slightly that. higher, okay. I, I don't know where I got lower. I swear I've, I've seen lower somewhere. But uh, if the book says higher, let's go with moderate to high protein intake, okay? I found something that says uh, too much protein with hepatitis can cause encephalopathy. <laughs> Below. Below. See, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, all right. So moderate. there, let's, let's put a pin in that one. And there, it's not listed in my book as a possible test question. Let's just say be careful with protein. Can we say that? Because, yes, breakdown of proteins create ammonia, right? And ammonia causes hepatic encephalopathy. So that's going to be a change in the amount of ammonium in the head, uh, which we're going to talk about here in just a minute anyway. So I, so I, didn't, I would say lower protein, but let's just say, just say be careful with protein, okay? And it won't be on the test. Oops. Okay. If it is, we have a recording of you saying. Yeah. It, it's not on the test. Hey, well, hold me to it. You know, I'm not perfect, guys, and and I don't know it all either. That's why I'm sitting here going. I'm reading. I'm literally reading it and going. Wait a minute. He should have lower protein. You know, it's that monologue in my head running. I'm telling you. Okay. So hepatitis continues. Let's come up with some interventions for people with uh, hepatitis. Uh, activity and tolerance, impaired physical mobility, what are we going to do for them? What do you think? Help them. Help them, yes, <laughs> I'm going to help them. Come up with an exercise program that. Exercise program that they can do. How about adding in periods of rest, okay? They can't be uh, uh, immobile. We're not going to say just sit there and watch us play. But we're going to make sure there's a good life balance here, that they have uh, exercises they can do. How about imbalanced nutrition? 
I would say limit protein, but I don't know what the book says, okay? But, all right, limit protein, but how about smaller meals instead of bigger meals at one time? High calorie, fluid, fluid volume deficit. We want to ensure that they have enough fluids. Uh, why are they going to have a fluid volume deficit? That should probably be... Think of it through, think of the pathophysiology. Why are they going to have a fluid volume deficit for hepatitis? They're not producing all the nutrients. They can't hold on to their fluid. They can't hold on to their fluid, so say they're having problems with their albumin. But also, where could the fluid be going? Ascites. Ascites in the abdominal cavity. Okay? So even though they, they have the same weight, if the fluid is not in the circulatory system, they're going to have problems with circulatory uh, deficiency. Okay? So we're going to make sure that they have fluids. Uh, potential for disrupted skin integrity. Uh, you can have people that have ascites to the point to where they start weaving, and it can develop uh, infections. Altered body, uh, not only that, what else is uh, made by the uh, liver? Clotting factors. Clotting factors, okay? So they may have a higher risk of bleeding as well. Altered body image, they're ascites. Uh, we had a patient... Uh, female for her first go around of uh, paracentesis while we we're on clinicals this last week. You know, can you imagine a woman with a beer, be beer belly and how that would change their uh, outlook, their altered body image? Anxiety, deficient knowledge, knowing both what caused it, what precautions that they have to go through. So that's that's why we need to tell them about you know what's coming next. Teaching, teaching, teaching. If I can. Uh, oh, as far as skin integrity, uh, protect the skin with lubrication. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. Just kidding. <laughs> Emollients. <laughs> Josh, Josh, I love you, man. I love you. Okay. All right, so let's talk about cirrhosis, uh, pathophysiology. It's a chronic uh, progressive disease. Uh, it's destruction of the liver cells, uh, disruption of the, the normal flow of blood through the liver uh, and its liver processes. Uh, there's different types of cirrhosis. You can't, just because uh, it's not always you drink a lot. It could do, be due to uh, alcohol, post-necrotic, biliary, cardiac, uh, hepatitis, all these things cause uh, cirrhosis. So don't think, oh, you've got cirrhosis to the liver. It has to be, it could be fatty foods. It could be, I mean, there's lots of things that can cause cirrhosis. It's not just, I drink too much. I may drink too much, but, you know, it's not always. Signs and symptoms. Early, uh, you're going to have slight weight loss. Unexplained fever and fatigue. Uh, dullness and heaviness in the right upper quadrant. Uh, it, as it progresses, you're going to have increased in, uh, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, diarrhea constipation. constipation. Probably, I hate. Just let's put up a letter up there. I want to. I want a U, Pat. No. Okay. Uh, dyspepsia, esophageal varices, uh, and these are because of the portal hypertension. You have these esophageal varices. Uh, it's inflamed vessels in the neck uh, or in the, uh, near the esophagus. So what would you probably not want to do on a patient with esophageal varices or someone that has cirrhosis? What procedure would the doctor say, okay, put this in him? NG tube. Because you, as that NG tube is going down, you can nick one of those varices and bleeding out, you're not going to stop it. You're not even going to make it to the call light before he, he bleeds out. It'll be projectile blood this far. Okay. Um, infections, epitaxis. Uh, later, you're going to have jaundice, palmar erythema, and spider angiomas around the abdomen, usually. Uh, confusion and decreasing level of consciousness. This is due to uh, the inability to process um, ammonia and increased uh, hepatic encephalopathy. And of course, it causes ascites as well. Tell me when I'm getting close to time up. Your time is up. Okay. Uh, complications. Uh, portal hypertension can lead to ascites, increased backup pressure, 
uh, forces the fluid into uh, the, the uh, abdominal structures. Esophageal varices increases the risk for uh, bleeding, high risk for bleeding. Um, a lot of times when those varices burst, and they can burst on their own as well, it, it's, it's a no-win situation. Uh, hepatic encephalopathy is a buildup of ammonia in the blood. And it's very uh, acidic uh, to brain cells. <laughs> And level of consciousness changes, possible seizures. So you are knowing, we can see the complications or the signs and symptoms, what's going to happen. I want you as a study technique to start looking at, okay, if the patient has a buildup of ammonia in blood, what am I going to do? How am I going to solve that? You know, maybe possibly a lower protein levels. We're going to give medications, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. But that's how we should be studying. When you see these facts, level of consciousness changes. Well, what am I going to be looking for? What do you mean by level of consciousness? And it's usually um, he'll be he'll start being in his own world. He'll see things, visualizations, hallucinations. Uh, he's going to be forgetful, not know where he is. He can be combative. You know, these are the things that you you need to know. Uh, seizures. If a patient has potential seizures, what are you going to do for that patient? Seizure precautions, for sure. What do you need at the bedside? Suction. Suction. Oxygen. That's Oxygen. Oxygen. Airway. Airway. See, these, this is how you should be looking at these lectures. What's happening? What do I need to make sure of? Okay. Uh, medical diagnosis. We're going to look at their HPs. We're going to look at their liver function tests. Uh, CBC, PTI, and INR, because we're looking at clotting factors or changes in the clotting cascade. Uh, albumin, bilirubin, uh, liver biopsy or CT scan, uh, MRIs, liver biopsies. This is fine needle biopsies. If we're going to stick a needle in the, uh, in the liver, take a little bit of piece out, what do you think needs to happen for 15 minutes afterwards? Hold pressure. Hold pressure. You know, because we're not really necessarily worried about bleeding on the outside of the skin. We're worried about rupturing the uh, liver inside. So we want to put pressure on the site. Uh, cirrhosis medical treatment uh, goal. Limit deterioration of liver function. We want to maintain function as best we can. We're going to allow for bed rest for, because he's going to have uh, fatigue. Uh, high carb, moderate to high. See, I, I call bullshit. Sorry. Uh, I say lower protein because we're, I am seriously worried about the ammonia levels because I've had patients come in with super high ammonia levels, like you could smell it on their breath. I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? So I, I'm going to say moderate to low, okay? Just if it's on the test and I, I choose it wrong, hit me hard on that one, okay? Uh, unless unless well, I guess unless an elevated ammonia level. But if they have cirrhosis, they're they're going to have an elevated to a certain degree. Uh, sodium restrictions, uh, IV fluids. We're going to give them oral uh, 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 fluids, albumin, dialysis, blood transfusions. Usually after uh, paracentesis, we're going to give them albumin as well because whatever fluids left in the abdominal tissues. We want to try to draw back into the circulatory system. Uh, medications, uh, diuretics, triatide, propanolol, and lactulose. Lactulose is that one uh, treatment that we use a lot for ammonia levels. We want to, it will absorb the ammonia and help bring those down. If they cannot drink it, how are you going to give it? <laughs> right, you know, from the bottom up, you know, but... Because of the, the, the tissue membrane in the rectum is so thin, and there's a whole lot of blood flow going there because we are absorbing our, our fluids from that level, we can transfer ammonia through the tissue. It's that osmosis technique. Uh, but we're going to bring those uh, ammonia levels down to the point to where he can now drink it, and then you're spending the rest of the shift pooping. What's the benefit of Say that again? Propanolol. Propanolol, beta blocker, we're going to keep uh, blood pressure down because remember portal hypertension, we want to keep blood pressure lower. No? Why that medication as opposed to the dozens of other preventive 
can't one may be uh, more may be better for liver dysfunction rather than uh, I don't know I, I would have to look it up on the computer or on the uh, drug list see if you can find something I'm I'm up for knowing but this is also stuff that you don't uh, don't spend a whole ton of time researching because you know what I mean Alright, how close? Three minutes. Three well, minutes. I'm going to really take all my three minutes. Don't you even think of that. Alright. Cirrhosis, uh, medical treatment, ascites, various types of diuretics. What does Alan Buman do? And we've talked about this multiple times. We're going to draw fluid. Oops. We're going to draw fluid into the vascular system for excretion. So any of that edema, we want back in the circulatory system so our kidneys can uh, filter it out and uh, uh, release it. Paracentesis, uh, we can do a peritoneal venous shunt where we put in a shunt into the venous system for in the peritoneal uh, cavity. So automatically, some of that excess fluid will go back into circulation. Uh, bleeding in esophageal, esophageal uh, varices, we can do drug therapy uh, to uh, swollen those inflamed uh, tissues or scleral therapy. We can, we can freeze them so that they uh, are less. And this is pretty much what, uh, it looks like, uh, I can barely see that, but it looks like bleeding varices that they're trying to either use sclerotherapy or we can uh, cauterize, we can cauterize them as well uh, to prevent the bleeding uh, of the varices. If you had bleeding varices, what do you think you would see? A lord. A lord what? The lord. The lord? Well, because they can, <laughs> we can have um, we can have bleeding as opposed to perforation. Perforation is yes, you're going to check out, you know, the daisies on the. But what if they're just bleeding? What if they're just leaky? Weakness, low H and H, and then what if they have an upset stomach? They could have an upset stomach because iron is very hard on the stomach. Upset stomach, low H and H. Uh, what are their stools going to look like? Black tarry. Black tarry stools. So. Think in your head, if, if there's bleeding and it's above the, the intestines, it's going to be black tarry stool. So you can see. Did you find anything on the propanolol? Yeah, so it potentiates the diuretic effect and it's used specifically because it has better effect on total hypertension. Okay, awesome. It's better on the liver. So um, just know that. <clears throat> okay, is it time? It's time. All right, it's time. All right, so the rest of this lecture, we're on uh, the slide 12, it looks like, out of 35, I'll finish. Um, I'm probably not going to work on this until tomorrow, uh, because tonight is going to be a long night. A uh, couple things, a couple notices. Uh, first of all, I want you to have a great uh, spring break. Spring break. <laughs> no, that word. Um, great spring break. Uh, don't not study. But I don't want you to spend like all your time studying. Try to recharge. Try to get back at, you know, your mental status back into the place that you can, you know, function here. Uh, be careful. Uh, don't die. That would be bad. Um, I'm going to try to put together kind of steady aid, kind of how to take a nursing test. I haven't had an opportunity yet, but this is on my mind and I want to. Uh, kind of the, like the rules of taking nursing tests. Uh, and I'm also going to post uh, Kaplan's uh, decision tree. Go through it. And if that helps you answer questions, cool. Let, let's do it. Okay. Uh, but either way, I'm going to try to post something. Uh, but I am also going to take a few days off, too. So. Evaluations. Huh? Evaluations we got to do. Oh, forgot. Evaluations opened yesterday, I think. Uh, if you have not been to a place that you're going to be going to within the next few weeks, wait on that one. If you're not ever going to see uh, Miss Angie as a nursing instructor or a, a clinical instructor, just NA, NA. If you don't go someplace, NA, NA, NA. Uh, but when it comes down to grades posted for exam five, if 17 or 25 or whatever people take the exam, that's how many uh, results I need for each one of those surveys, and I will not release the exams until that is, is completed. Okay. Is it the course surveys. Or just it's course surveys, surveys, my oh, survey. Uh, it's like clinical clinical surveys, the clinical so site survey. You know, and, and I put an announcement with them hyperlinked. So